All right, all right. Thank you all for tuning in to WJC LP Chicago 98.3 FM. And welcome to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. Sorry for the late start today. You know, good old Chicago weather. Um, but nonetheless, we are here. Definitely thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We are live today on WGAC LP 98.3 FM, Chicago, right? Chicago, shout out to the Shy City. Love Chicago. Don't love the weather, but love Chicago nonetheless. Shout out to everyone for listening. So welcome to my show, Money Talks, where all we talk is money. You're listening live on WJC LP 98.3 FM, Chicago. I'm your host today. My name is Jeff Badu. On the show, Money Talks, where all we talk is money. And I'm a parallel entrepreneur and a wealth multiplier. I'm the founder and CEO of Badu Enterprises, LLC, which is a multinational conglomerate in the finance industry. So what we do here is we provide a suite of financial services, including our marquee company, which is Badu Tax Services. And that's the firm that provides tax preparation, planning and representation for individuals and businesses across all 50 states in the U.S. And we also have clients in over 25 countries at the moment. Then we have Badu Investments LLC, which is our real estate investment company where we acquire apartment buildings, rental properties, mainly on the south side of Chicago, in efforts to restore traditionally underserved communities. Currently, we have 212 units under our control on the south side of Chicago, and we plan to continuously expand our portfolio and making an impact in those communities. Then we have Badu Life and Health Solutions, LLC. Shout out to my wife, Yvonne Badu, who is the CEO of the company, where we provide life insurance products and solutions to individuals, families, and small businesses. And then we have, last but not least, the Badu Foundation, where we provide financial literacy education to the youth ages 6 to 18, where we teach them on topics such as budgeting, saving, investing, and scholarships. My purpose in life is to inspire and support the super hungry to take hold of infinite resources in order to create an abundant, right, an abundant lifestyle. And so with that, once again, welcome to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. And I'm your host, Jeff Badu. Um, you're tuned in to WJC LP 98.3 FM. You can catch us live on the radio if you're in Chicago. Just tune in to 98.3 FM in Chicago. Or, right, or you can also um, go to the website, wghcradio.org. That's wghcradio.org. All right. And then shout out to those that are listening on Facebook. We're streaming live on Facebook and on Instagram. If you don't mind typing in the chat, um, first of all, if you don't mind liking this video and sharing this video, if you can. And then if you don't mind typing in the chat where you're listening from so that we can potentially give you a shout out. Always like giving out shout outs to those that are listening. Happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving in advance. I hope you enjoy um, Thanksgiving to um, this week with you and your family. I know I'll be taking off Thursday, most of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, of course. Um, I personally don't work the weekends anymore. That's something I actually don't decided not to do as of earlier this year. Right now, when you're starting out as an entrepreneur, you probably want to start. You probably do want to work weekends, right? Because you need to start building that business. And when you get it to a certain level, where you're able to build a team and you're able to build systems, then you can say, okay. Let me go ahead and, you know, potentially, um, now that I have more time, right, now I can enjoy my weekends, I can enjoy my Saturdays, but when you're starting out, you need to sacrifice some things. I'm not saying be a slave to the dollar or anything like that, but ultimately what I am saying is you need to make sacrifices, especially your first few years as an entrepreneur. Me personally, this is my fifth year. Um, actually, we're, we're past year five now, um, year five. We're in our sixth year of running the firm Badu Tax Services LLC, which was the first company in the Badu Enterprises brand. So just wanted to shout, you know, throw that out there. You know, sometimes when you say things, you want to make sure that you explain it, that people are clear. So when you say something like, hey, I don't work weekends anymore, there's a reason why. Right? I've, I've had to grind. I've had to work, you know, blood, sweat, and tears many days and nights, many weekends where I stayed up till 2 a.m. on a Saturday. Right, doing tax returns. I remember those days. I've been there before. Um, so starting out, you might have to do these things, but as you build a team and put systems in place, then you don't have to be out 
till 2 a.m. on a Saturday like I was doing tax returns during tax season. All right, that's when delegation and mastering the operations comes in handy. So hopefully that nugget sits with you and you're able to ponder on it a bit. I do want to shout out to Holistically Divine Org from Chicago, Illinois, Mental Health Private Practice. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Holistically Divine Org. All right. Feel free to follow them on Instagram. And so today we'll be talking about 10 things, 10 things you can do, 10 specific things you can do to eliminate taxes for 2021. Really, like legitimately. There's 10 things you can do to eliminate, reduce or potentially eliminate taxes, income taxes for all of 2021. Now, I have some clients that pay me about $10,000 a year just to gain advice like what you're hearing today, right? Um, so we will keep it pretty generic, but at the same time, you can literally apply these strategies if you know how to execute them and be able to wipe out your taxes down to zero. All right, so we'll talk about 10 specific things that you can do to potentially eliminate your taxes. Some of these, they might not sound as sexy, but I will mention them nonetheless. You know, so just something to keep in mind. But as usual, we do like to kick it off with the market report. We'll do about five minutes. So we'll start at 7.20 p.m. Central with the topic for today. If you want to grab some water, invite somebody to listen to this today. Feel free to tag a friend or two, by the way, so they can listen with you today. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, or even if you're on the radio. All right, so this market report is as of November 19, 2021. Stocks closed last week mixed with the NASDAQ, which is composed of the top technology stocks in the world. Um, then you have, and the S&P 500, which is composed of the top 500 companies in the United States of America, home of the free, land of the brave. All right. Another round of strong corporate earnings. Um, data was enough to overcome investor concerns that rise in inflation, which is the diminishing purchasing power of your money, right? rising inflation, um, might accelerate the withdrawal of economic stimulus, while a resurgence of COVID-19 cases in Europe, right, a resurgence of COVID-19 cases in Europe could lead to more lockdowns, stalling economic recovery. All right, so there's a bit of mixed feelings in the, in the market, basically and in that investors are concerned about rising inflation, which is things getting more expensive. You notice gas prices, food, you know, everything is getting more expensive. Hey, tax services might be more expensive next year. You know, you never know. Um, so with all that being said, inflation is when things become more expensive. The dollar that you have today can buy less things tomorrow. That's all inflation really is. One way to combat inflation is to invest your money, is to make your money work hard for you. All right. So basically, investors are concerned about that. Um, and they're saying withdrawal of economic stimulus. So the government basically providing funding to the to the world, basically. Right. And then there was a resurgence of COVID-19 cases in Europe specifically that led to more lockdowns. All right. So let's start Monday. Monday, stocks closed marginally lower to begin the week. Nothing too crazy happened there. Last Tuesday, equities rose following strong economic data. When there's strong economic data, then investors get excited and they start buying stocks, which increases the demand. And when increased demand happens, that increases the price. That's what inflation is all about. All right, lower supply, higher demand equals higher prices. All right, and then, so that's last Tuesday. Last, um, last Wednesday, momentum kept carrying on. So the, let's see here. All right. Actually, last Wednesday, stock market went down, right? It went down. So the NASDAQ went down 0.3%. S&P 500 also went down 0.3%. And then Thursday, the consumer discretionary and IT shares helped push the NASDAQ up 0.5% and the S&P 500 up 0.3%. The Wall Street was driven lower last Friday as economically sensitive market sectors such as energy financials and healthcare fell. So it was pretty mixed in the market last week. So far this year, the Dow Jones is up 16.32%, S&P 500 up 
Still massive, massive gains in the market. Insane gains in the market. The NASDAQ, which is composed mainly of technology stocks, 24.59%. 24.59%. S&P 500 is up 25.08%. Russell 2000 is up 19.68%. The global Dow is up 16.34%. Massive gains if you're not invested into something that's going to produce you money, you're making a massive mistake. If your money is sitting in the bank earning 0% while inflation is 5 to 6%, you're making a huge mistake because your, your money is literally losing money. It's losing value every day as it sits in the bank dead. It is literally dead money because if it's not growing and it's just sitting there and things are getting more expensive, now that money can't buy as much stuff. Stocks get more expensive, real estate gets more expensive, um, clothes get more expensive, shoes, jewelry, water, groceries, kids, diapers, everything gets more expensive when it comes to inflation. So if you're not investing your money, you're going to have some really, really big problems. All right, so some things to look forward to this week. We are at 6, 720 on the dot, so let me just keep this short. Um, let's see. Thanksgiving week is filled with important economic reports led by the second estimate of third quarter GDP, gross domestic product for short. The initial estimate showed the, economic, the economy expanded at a rate of 2%, well off the pace of 6.7% set in the third quarter, so slower growth. All right. The report on personal income and outlays for October is also out this week. Although personal income fell 0.1% in September, consumer spending increased 0.6%, and consumer prices rose 0.3%. Finally, the housing sector is front and center with the latest data on sales of new and existing homes. Sales of both new and existing homes soared in September, increasing 14 and 7% respectively. All right, so there you have it. You got to get invested in the market. All right, so with that being said, thank you all for tuning in to my show, Money Talks, where all we talk is money. You're live on, you're listening live on WJCLP 98.3 FM Chicago. You can listen to us live on the radio on 98.3 FM if you're in Chicago. Or you can tune in to WGHC Radio, WGHCRadio.org, and you can listen live to the show as well. We're streaming live on Facebook and Instagram. Please feel free to comment in the chat. Um, well, first of all, please like and share this video. Like and share the video if you can. And then please comment in the chat where you're listening from today. If you got any questions, comments, whatever it is, please feel free to type it in the chat too. Um, so before we get into the topic for today, which are 10 things you can do to eliminate taxes um, this year, 2021. Um, let's go into some, some comments. We got some stuff on Instagram. All right, Poca Moore. Shout out to Poca Moore. Said, my mom loves watching you and your page. She sent me here. Absolutely. Shout out to Poca Moore. Um, thanks to your mom for sharing the information. Um, not sure what flag that is, so I won't, I would not budge that one. Uh, so shout out to your mom for sharing this information. Yeah, tag somebody or two. You never know the impact you can make in somebody's life just by sharing information, content. Nowadays, all this stuff is pretty much free right? You don't have to pay a penny to get this information today. Back then, you had to pay thousands of dollars just to get access to this stuff, right? So when you tag somebody, when you like, when you share the video, guess what? Now you expand it to more people. Now more people are benefiting from the information. It could be your family, it could be your friends, your loved ones, your clients, whoever it is. I know somebody can benefit from this information just by tagging them in a the chat today. All right, and then sharing the video too, liking and sharing. All right, official, let's see, official X Nico asks, when do you think the next market crash will be? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, unfortunately. The market technically already crashed last year, around March and April. Um, the stock market went down quite tremendously, so there goes your market crash right there. But of course, what goes down must come right back up. And one thing I would strongly recommend you not do is to try to time the market. All right, you should always be investing, like every day. You should be investing every single day. Forget about price fluctuations. 
right? Buy today. Buy now. Don't don't worry about what's going to happen 10, you know, two, three, five years from now. Worry about what you know today to make informed decisions today, not tomorrow, right? So it's not about when the market is going to crash and all that. I mean, the type of investments we're invested in, whether it crashes or not, we still make money no matter what. Um, Andrew, let's see, Andrew Shai, or Andrew Shi, sorry if I'm budging the name, um, 1628 says, would you prefer to invest in residential or commercial real estate? The only real estate that I buy personally is apartment buildings, rental properties, apartment buildings, more specifically, class B and sometimes class C apartment buildings on the south side of Chicago. Right, so technically they fall in the category of commercial real estate, but if you think about it, it's not really commercial because there's residents, there's tenants that actually live there. So according to taxes, it's still a residential real estate property, but according to the world, they know it as a commercial property, which is a, a property that has five or more units in the building. Right, five plus. We also call it multifamily real estate. Multifamily real estate. Shout out to Desi on the Badu Tax Services team. Um, Desi from Instagram is listening from Texas. Always appreciate her tuning in and her divine hunger. It's awesome. Shout out to Jerry, Jerry Bafour on Facebook. He says, listening all the way from Chicago, Illinois, the tax hotbed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you guys should really watch out for taxes, by the way. There's a big tax reform that's going to be passed pretty soon. You guys really need to watch out for that. Um, don't let the tax man get you. The tax man is like the boogeyman. <laughs> don't let Uncle Sam get you because when he does, he bites pretty hard. Right? When he comes to Thanksgiving eating all that turkey, he doesn't want to leave you any. All right? So basically, we always have to watch out when it comes to taxes. And there's a big tax reform that's about to be passed by the end of this year. So don't be the person that's sitting at the Thanksgiving table getting ready to be handed the turkey. Next thing you know, Uncle Sam is sitting at the table and he eats all the turkey, right? Or he takes a big chunk out of the turkey before he hands it over to you. That's basically what income taxes are. And the reason why we don't want that to happen is because we want to eat all the turkey. Not because we're greedy, but because we want the turkey for our families, our true blood, real families. Not somebody that's a stranger from the outside. We want to eat the turkey, pass it to grandma, pass it to grandpa, pass it to mommy, pass it to daddy, pass it to brother, sister, spouse, whatever it is. And then we can also give it to maybe the homeless. We can give it to charity, right? So when you have an outside person, imagine a stranger just knocks on your door and says, hey, I need half that turkey. Right? I need 30% of that turkey. I mean, that's not good at all. That's not pleasant. And you, you, you spent all your hard-earned time and money buying this turkey. Can you imagine? You seasoned it. You cooked it overnight. You spent, you know, four, eight, four, six, eight hours just waiting for this turkey to get really marinated and really good. Shout out to my wife, Yvonne, by the way, uh, who basically taught me how to make the turkey. And she has the best tasting turkey on this God-given planet. I kid you not. She has the best tasting turkey I have ever had in my life. Right. So when I use some of these analogies, it's also based on how I learn how to make turkey. All right. So with all that being said, I think it's it's only appropriate and important that we use this analogy because that is how taxes really work. It's you have this turkey that you can distribute to your family, yourself, and then also maybe to, a, you know, to the homeless or your loved ones. And all of a sudden, you know, you've spent all this time, all this hard work seasoning the turkey, marinating the turkey, buying the turkey, cooking the turkey, right? Buying the potatoes, the carrots and all that. And then all of a sudden, when you guys are ready to sit down at the dinner table, you guys are about to have a great time, music, drinks, all that. And then the stranger knocks on your door named Uncle Sam and says, hey, by the way, did you realize that you owe me 30 to 50% of that turkey, all right? Before you guys eat it, I need my 30% and I need it now. I'm not going away until I get the 30%. So what do we want to do? We want to avoid that from happening by using strategies to keep Uncle Sam away from your door. Legally, of course. Right? 
legally. So we're keeping them away legally from your door. And so there's 10 things you can do between now and December 31st. And please don't wait until December 31st to do this. There's 10 things you can do. And then I'll give you some bonuses, some extras, if you have some, some extra time. Um, the first thing you can do is when you're about to receive a large lump sum of money. P.S. I don't recommend this, but I'm just giving you strategies today. And I will keep it real with you and tell you the things that I do recommend and the things I don't recommend. But one thing you can do is defer income to next year. You can defer a large lump sum. Let's say somebody owes you money, $50,000, or you're about to get a $50,000 check. What you can do is you can defer it into the future and say, hey, date the check January 1st, 2022, or send me the check after the new year. Now, what I mean, what, what guarantee is it that this person will even be alive in 2022? What guarantee is there that this person won't go through a hardship where we have another COVID-19? We got Delta. We got Omega. We got, let's see, we got Alpha. We got all these different variants coming around. What what's stopping this person? You know what what divine force is stopping this person from going through all that and not being able to pay you? So I don't ever recommend you defer income. I need my money and I need it now. I need it today, right? If you owe me money, I need it now. It's not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's not next month. If you owe me some money today, I need it today, because I can invest that money, make a return on it and do the things that I want for myself, my family, and my loved ones. So I don't recommend you defer income to next year. But some people do. Maybe you just started a business and you got a large lump sum check. And you can basically say, hey, can you defer this check to you know, January 1st, 2022? But what guarantee is it that something won't happen between you? Of course, we don't like to think negative. But at the same time, we do have to sometimes think, you know, think about some of the worst case scenarios. What happens if this person that owes you goes bankrupt? Now they don't owe you anymore. Now you got to chase them in court collections. And now your money is getting dry and getting eaten up. All right. So examples include bonuses. Bonuses are one. Some people choose to defer their bonuses. You know, collection of business debts and rent. So I don't recommend you use this method at all. Do not defer income until next year. Get your money today and get it right now. Right? Get it today and get it right now. Even for the lottery players out there. Right? If you are one of the unlikely folks to win the lottery, get the money today. Invest it into something. Buy some real estate. Grow your assets. Grow your net worth so that you can ultimately be able to, to sustain yourself. Now, this next one I do recommend, accelerate deductions. Number two, accelerate deductions. Look for opportunities to accelerate write-offs, right? Maybe it's a car that you, you're like, okay, I plan to buy a car early next year. Well, why not just buy it in this month or next month? You can get a depreciation tax deduction of up to the full purchase price of the car. And if it's an electric vehicle, you can get tax credits up to about $7,500 tax credit if you buy like a Tesla, for example, right, or certain types of cars. So not only do you get the depreciation deduction, if you're a business owner, of course, you also get a tax credit for the, the car, the Tesla, and the charging station that you have. All right, so accelerating deductions, accelerating purchases could be something that you do. Or the biggest asset on the planet, real estate, and you can accelerate depreciation on your property. You can buy a property. Let's say you're a real estate agent and you made $150,000 in your real estate business. You spent $50,000 in write-offs, you know, fees, and laptop, clothing, jewelry. Um, let's see, what else? Your, your car, all right? vacations or trips, business trips, meals. All this stuff, right? You deduct all that and you're left with $100,000 profit. Well, this money would be sitting in the bank. What better thing for you to be buying than the thing that you're selling to other people? Real estate, right? Real estate. So let's say you bought a $400,000 property. And let's just say you put down $50,000 on the property. 
You don't even have to do that if you're utilizing low down payment programs. What you can do is you can deduct, you can claim a depreciation tax deduction where you accelerate it, you speed it up on up to 25% of the building's purchase price. So that all of a sudden at $400,000, you get a $100,000 tax deduction off that. All right. So now your $100,000 minus $100,000 of the tax deduction equals $0 in taxable income. All right, so basically what you can do is you can reinvest your profits into income producing assets. You can follow the three-step infinite wealth building formula. Check out the infinite wealth course, by the way, if you haven't already. Excuse me. Um, you can follow the three-step infinite wealth building formula and basically you know, use the profits you earn in your business or in your W-2 and put it into something like real estate, specifically rental real estate. All right. So essentially you can accelerate some of your deductions and hopefully these are things that you truly need. So don't just go out and buy a car just for a tax deduction. Right. And let real estate, the reason why you're buying a real estate mainly be because of cash flow the ability to earn more on your money. All right. Shout out to Eddie. Shout out to Eddie from Abstract Management. See you tune in on Instagram. All right. Another thing you can do is be a gift to others. Give back. Donate money. Right. One thing you can do is donate money to charity. So when you donate money to charity, what happens is you can get a deduction. You can get a, a deduction. Let's say you donated $10,000. You can now get a $10,000 tax write-off to reduce your taxable income by $10,000. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And then for 2022 um, or for 2021, even if you don't do what's called itemized deductions where you don't have at least $12,000 or more in donations, you can get a guaranteed $300 deduction if you're single and then one of the best tax strategies in the world, marriage, right? If you're married, then it's $600 for a joint tax return. So you can give money to charity. If you need a charity to give money to, check out the Badu Foundation, where we teach financial literacy to the youth ages 6 to 18 about budgeting, saving, investing, and scholarships. We have a program going on next year where we'll have 100 students learning, you know, sitting in a Zoom for a month learning about basically how to make your money work for you. They're reading books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, my infinite expansion book. I do have another book that will be coming out next year, by the way, as a hint. Um, so overall, you can donate. You can go to the Badu. You can go to badufoundation.org, B-A-D-U foundation.org, badufoundation.org. There's a section on the page to donate, so you can actually donate. And whatever you donate, you get a tax deduction for that, as long as you claim itemized deductions. Or even if you don't claim itemized deductions, you can still deduct it using the $300 and $600 election or deduction um, for charities. By the way, you are tuned in to WJC 98.3 LP, Chicago. We're all, you know, um, basically, you listen to my show, Money Talks, where all we talk is money. And WJC LP 98.3 um, FM, by the way, is a 501c3 non for profit organization as well. So you can donate to the station as well by going to WGHCRadio.org. That's WGHCRadio.org. You can donate and you can get a tax write off. Same thing you can do with the Badu Foundation. Go to BaduFoundation.org and you can get a tax write off for donating. Whatever you donate, you get a tax deduction for that. And we use this money to fund program materials such as the books, um, you know, such as the, the worksheets and everything like that. And we give them a scholarships. Our goal is to give 100 students at least $500 in scholarships next year, as we've done every year. We've always given our students scholarships. We gave out 30 scholarships this year, um, totaling $15,000. As a matter of fact, we gave out 31 scholarships because we have one extra student in our program this year. So I personally wrote a check for $500 for the extra one student. All right. So these are some things that you can do to, you know, donate. So even if I'm donating, let's say that I wanted to fund 
all the scholarships next year. I want to fund $50,000 in scholarships for next year. I can literally make a contribution into the Badu Foundation account, and then I get a $50,000 tax deduction. Right? That's a nice tax write-off that could reduce your taxable income. So in, many, in a lot of countries, you don't get this benefit. But imagine America is giving you a benefit just for being generous. It's crazy. It's insane. The next thing you can do, I do not recommend this, but you can bump up your withholdings. You can give Uncle Sam more money up front. I mean, who wants to do that, right? Um, I don't recommend you do this, but this is something you can do as a quote-unquote strategy. I don't see really the strategy in this. By the way, sometimes when I read stuff to you guys, it's from articles, it's from sources, and I like to break it down so that I can tell you the good stuff and the bad stuff. Another thing you can do is you can increase your retirement savings. You can look into a 401k IRA, permanent life insurance policy. All right. Now, usually when it comes to retirement, I don't recommend you save pre-tax. Try to save after tax. Do not use a traditional pre-tax account. Use a Roth or after tax account. Why? Because tax rates will be going up in the future. And the problem with a pre-tax account is not only will you pay taxes in the future on the money that you've put into the account, but you also pay taxes on the growth of the account. So if you got $100,000 that you invested in a 401k account and it went up to $150,000, you are paying taxes on the full $150,000. And guess what? Not at the capital gains tax rates, which are more favorable. They're lower rates. But you're paying it at your ordinary income tax rates. Killer. That's a big killer. I think that's a robbery in a tax code. Sorry for the background noise. Um, that's a big robbery right there. Meaning if you put money into a 401k account right now and it's pre-tax, it's a traditional 401k, right? There's traditional 401k and then there's Roth or, or, or after-tax 401k. If, if let's say you put in $100,000 and the money has grown over time, has become $150,000 and you go to retire and say, hey, I need my money. Well, now you got to pay taxes on not only the $100,000 you put in because you got a write-off of $100,000. But also the extra fifty thousand that you received in earnings and interest, you got to pay taxes on that, not at your capital gains tax rates, the lower rates, but at your ordinary income tax rate, which in the U.S. right now is thirty-seven percent. All right, not your fifteen or twenty percent, but thirty-seven percent. This is why all of my clients save money on an after-tax basis when it comes to retirement. They save money in a Roth 401k, a Roth IRA, permanent life insurance, preferably one that's premium finance, index universal life insurance policy, after-tax accounts, right? After-tax retirement accounts, not pre-tax. Pre-tax is pretty garbage. The only pre-tax account that I like when it comes to retirement is the health savings account, the HSA. The health savings account, the HSA. And the reason why is because it's also... An after-tax account. Why? Because when you put money in, you can put up to thirty-five fifty if you're single and seventy-one hundred if you're married. Um, you essentially get a tax write-off for the money you put in, and then it grows tax-free. Right? The money grows tax-free. You can invest it into stocks, index funds, even real estate. Whatever it is you decide to invest it in, ask your employer what you can invest it into. And then when you take the money out, preferably in retirement, you don't have to pay any taxes on it. It is the best retirement account on the planet to have when you really compare retirement accounts. And it's not even called a retirement account. It's just a qualified health savings account. That's all it is. It's not even by law a retirement account. right? So, But I treat it as a retirement account because I can put money away and it has beneficiaries tied to it as well. All right, so these are some things you can do. So remember, when it comes to saving for taxes or for retirement, and you should be putting at least 10% of your money away for retirement, by the way, 10% of your income. Um, when it comes to retirement, you should be saving money from an after-tax as opposed to pre-tax. And Desi commented, I need to move my money then. Absolutely. When I first found this out, that was one of the first things I did. I transferred my pre-tax 401k into a Roth 401k and I actually convert it later to a Roth IRA. Ever since then, my money has grown tax-free, right? And that's for the rest of my life. I don't have to ever worry about taxes ever again. Right? I'm working hard now to be able to build a pot, right? To be able to build 
a, a pool of money that's not even that's never going to get taxed, right? And if you don't think taxes are important, the highest tax rate in the U.S. right now is 37 percent. 37 percent. The average tax rate across the entire U.S. history, 60 percent average, the average, the highest tax rate in the history of the entire United States of America, the land of the free, home of the brave was 94% back in 1944. So if you had a traditional account, you were getting crushed. If you retired and you had a traditional account, you were getting crushed. And guess what? The people you pass the money to, now they got to deal with the taxes if you pass away. With a Roth, no such thing. So there's no reason why you should not be saving money in a Roth account. There's absolutely no reason. Yeah, they might have told you, oh yeah, you get a tax deduction now. Okay, so what? What about the future? When it comes to taxes, don't only think about the now, but think about the future. By the way, the greatest retirement account on the planet, in my opinion, is rental real estate, apartment buildings, right? rental properties. Yes, you do want to have some money liquid in a Roth IRA, Roth 401k, health savings account, permanent life insurance, right? all that stuff. But you also want to make sure that you're putting some money away for real estate, real estate investing. Whether you're managing it, where you're managing it as an active manager, or you have somebody else manage it for you, or you're partnered with somebody, right? You're partnered with somebody, and you pretty much get a piece of the pie. Get in real estate, however way you can. You can buy up to a four-unit building with as little as three and a half percent down payment, using a program called the FHA loan. And there's also down payment assistance programs that will cover your down payment 100% in full such as NACA, N-A-C-A, in Chicago, right? So there's no reason why anybody listening today shouldn't be owning real estate or desire to own real estate, rental real estate specifically. I'm not talking flipping unless that's your main business, nothing wrong with that. And I'm not talking wholesaling unless that's your main business or your way to get in into real estate. All right, so this next one does not apply to many people that are listening on this call today, I can imagine. But RMDs, required minimum distributions, are back in 2021. This is the biggest highway robbery on this God-given planet, in my opinion. There is nothing in the tax code that I believe is more of a robbery than required minimum distributions, RMDs. This is for my folks that are traditional. Right, if you're saving money pre-tax or traditional, you really want to get that money out after you listen to what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say can change the lives of millions of people. Let's get this. While required minimum distributions, RMDs were waived for 2020. So due to the pandemic last year, no RMDs were required for 2020. They are back for 2021. A lot of people forgot about this. If you are age 72 or older, you're age 72 or older, you generally must take, you must be forced to take RMDs from traditional IRAs and employer-sponsored retirement plans, ones that are traditional, like a 401k, traditional 401k. An exception may apply if you're still working for the employer sponsoring the plan. They basically want you to keep working for the rest of your life to avoid the jail, retirement jail called RMDs. All right, so basically they force, RMDs are forced distributions for your retirement account, even if you don't need it. They force you to take the money out. Take any distributions by the date required the end of the year for most individuals. All right, the penalty, the penalty for not taking money out of your 401k or IRA account in the amount that's required is 50% of the amount that you failed to distribute as required. When I first heard about this, I almost cried for some people because I had some clients that were facing RMDs, required minimum distributions, which if you're 72 or older, the government forces you to take money out of your traditional pre-tax retirement accounts. Traditional. And if you do not take the money by December 31st, Right, so December 31st, 2021, in this case, you have to pay a 50% penalty. A 50% penalty on the amount you don't take out. 
So if you have to take out ten thousand, Uncle Sam gets to keep five thousand. If that's not tax jail or robbery, I don't know what is. So there is absolutely no reason for you to not be taking money or putting money in to a Roth after tax 401k or IRA. All right? And Desi says, wow, absolutely. I said the same thing. That is tax jail. All right? That is definitely tax jail. And that's just the penalty. All right, that's just the penalty. Um, so lesson of the day today outside of investing in real estate is please make sure that you are saving money when it comes to retirement after tax as opposed to pre-tax. Do not put money into a traditional 401k account. Do not put money into a traditional IRA account. Most employers that I know nowadays, they will match you on the Roth after tax 401k, right? And then the IRA, please contribute to the Roth IRA. Now, RMDs do not apply to HSAs, health savings accounts, because they're not retirement accounts. They do not apply to permanent life insurance policies, IULs, index universal life, whole life, right? Whether it's premium finance or not, permanent life insurance, premium finance, index universal life insurance policies are one of the best investments you can make on the planet. No RMDs. The money grows tax-free. You take it out tax-free. It has a death benefit tied to it. You can use it for whatever you want. You can leverage against it. Right? You can borrow money against it and pay yourself back the interest, basically. Some people still don't understand that concept. Um, but for me, there was so much stuff going on in the insurance industry. So-and-so said this because they were working with this company. Then so-and-so said this because they were working with that company. I'm like, you know what? Let me go out and get myself educated. All right? Let me get, I actually went and got a license, a life insurance license, and understood front and center what the insurance industry was all about. And for me, when I found out about the premium finance, index universal life insurance policy, I said, next to real estate, this is one of the greatest investments you can make on the planet where you contribute, let's say, 20000 or 25000 a year, and a bank, a financial institution, will match you three times your money. You put in twenty five, they'll give you 75000 And all you got to do is put in this money for five years? I mean, I, the first thing I did after I learned that is I signed up myself. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I don't care what anybody's saying about this. I read it, reread it, reread it some more. Did some more research, read it, reread it some more, and boom, signed up for it. I'm like, this is powerful. Couple that with real estate and a business. I mean, you're living like the Rockefellers at that point. Literally a thousand generations that come after you, a thousand plus generations that come after you will have money left over. <laughs> Off of just your wealth that they, of course, took over and actually did something good with it. I'm not talking those that take it by Lamborghinis and all these other things, depreciable assets, and have nothing to show for it. All right. So the last thing you can do is please make sure you watch your investments. Now, in this document that I have in my hands, it tells you that, hey, sell stocks at a loss to claim the $3,000 capital loss that you can claim against your other sources of income. So when you sell a stock for a loss... You can take a tax deduction and, you know, count that against your income. I'm like, why in the world would anybody who has a brain in their heads do that? Why would I physically know that I'm about to lose money and then sell the stock to lose the money just for a tax write-off? It is the most unsensible thing that I've ever heard of from financial advisors. They say, hey, physically sell the stock. You're going to lose money, so sell the stock. Because you get a tax write-off of a mere $3,000. I mean, if that's not the worst advice that I've ever heard in my, in my life, I don't know what is. But I got Apple stock portfolio. Apple went down, let's just say, in just a, a short time period. It went down, let's say, 5%. So you mean to tell me I should just sell at that, knowing that I'm about to lose 5%, I should just sell so that I can claim a tax deduction of 
as if that's going to do anything anyway. So you do have to be very, very careful in who you're working with. Always make sure the person you're working with is out for your best interest. Um, so King, let's say King L.A. Pierre asked the question, um, if the stock's worth less than 3000 So yeah, basically, if let's say I, let's say I bought a stock for two thousand dollars right and then i sold it for or let, let's do this i bought it for five thousand and then i sold it for two thousand that's a three thousand dollar loss right i can use that loss to reduce my taxable income on other sources of income such as my w-2 my business 1099 whatever it is sorry for the background noise so that i'm paying taxes on three thousand dollars less of money Right, so I bought a stock for five thousand. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in Uptown today. We are in Uptown. We're live in Uptown today, in Chicago on WJT LP ninety eight point three FM. Thank you everyone for listening. We only got about five minutes left or so, but I bought a stock for five thousand. I sold it for two thousand because my advisor told me to to get a tax deduction. Right, so I lost three thousand dollars. Literally, I physically lost three thousand dollars. I'll get a 1099 at the end of the year that shows the $3,000 loss. I can use the 3,000 as a tax write-off against other sources of income such as a W-2 so that I'm paying taxes on $3,000 less of income, All right? So, I mean, that's just a strategy that says, hey, if you're in the stock market and you're losing money, we'll cut you some slack and we'll allow you to write off some of those losses. All right. so. Lesson of the day, if you're looking to essentially um, really reduce your taxable income down to zero, number one, consider looking into real estate. You don't have to be the one that's managing the property. You don't have to be the one that's handling the tenants and the headaches and all that. You can partner with somebody, you know, and we do offer partnership opportunities. You can partner with somebody, you know, basically join forces with them and go in on a deal together. Maybe that partner manages the deal for you and still cuts you a check or piece of the pie and you're getting a tax benefit, the biggest one, which is depreciation, depreciation. So there's multiple ways to get into real estate and you know you can basically do it on your own or you can partner with someone who's already in the game and still earn the benefits, the same benefits, you're just cutting more, you know, you're cutting a piece of the pie to the person all right so that's one if you don't own real estate now consider at least consider buying real estate specifically rental real estate more specifically preferably apartment buildings rental properties all right ones that cash flow preferably in decent neighborhoods um, also when you're saving for retirement try to save after tax as opposed to pre-tax right this includes a Roth 401k which is a work plan a Roth IRA, a health savings account, permanent life insurance policy, preferably one that's premium finance, bank funded life insurance policy um, that a bank, basically you can get a policy where you contribute, let's say 25,000 a year for five years and a bank will match you. They'll give you 75,000 a year for those five years. All right, when I found out about this, man, it was, I was so excited and I knew I had to share it with the world. I couldn't just keep the information to myself. I had to share it with the world. And now we have clients that are taking advantage of that. And they're like, man, this 401k that I have at work is nice. But man, this thing right here, a three times match, unheard of. You, no employer will match you three times on your contributions. It's impossible. All right. So, you know, that that's what I would, those are the two biggest takeaways um, make sure you're writing off, you know, you're taking your board meetings. I know I have a board meeting coming up, um, in Ghana, you know, actually we'll be, um, you know, doing some travels pretty soon. And so one of the board meetings that I typically have during the year is going to a foreign country, right? Like Ghana. Um, so overall, make sure you're writing things off, right? You got an Apple watch that you're using to tell time when you're in meetings, write it off. You got a suit jacket that you're using to meet with clients or do, you know, Facebook lives, IG lives, write it off. Shirts, haircuts, um, things that make you look more presentable. All right. Cell phone, internet, car, um, 
clothing, headphones, books that you're giving away to your team, whatever it is, write it off. For me, I don't pay for anything unless I can write it off. Right? If I can't write it off, I'm not buying it. It's, it's as simple as that. If I can't write it off, I'm not paying for it. Because a true write-off, the reason why the IRS allows you to write things off because it's an investment in your business. It's real simple. right? Me having a cell phone, whether it's the, the latest iPhone on the block, me having a cell phone allows me to take calls when clients call me. Right? Me having an Apple Watch literally allows me to tell time when I'm doing an IG Live. How in the world can I tell time when I got two phones that stream alive on IG? How in the world can I do that? I have to have an Apple Watch. It's a must. Even though it helps me track my fitness and you know help, it looks nice and all that stuff, it don't matter. Same thing with fancy cars, Teslas. Right? How in the world can I get to clients? Let's say you're a real estate agent. How in the world can I get to my showings if I don't have my Tesla? Even though I'm going on road trips with my family, what we claim it as a board meeting anyway. So you do have to be creative when you're dealing with taxes. Always keep your receipts. Always document everything. Check out the Infinite Wealth course, by the way, which is a three-hour course that teaches you all these things in a nutshell. Next week, we'll have an in-depth discussion about the course and the three-step infinite wealth building formula. If you're on IG, it's the first, um, actually second link in my bio, second link in my bio, that's the infinite wealth course. And then if you're on Facebook, you can go to jeffbadu.com and go to the infinite wealth course section. Type in a code infinite, type in a code infinite today for a chance to receive 50% off the infinite wealth course. Once again, the infinite wealth course is a three hour online course Available on my website, jeffbadu.com. If you're on IG, it's the second link in my bio. Type in a code INFINITE and you get the course for 50% off. It's my gift to you today for listening, being attentive, taking notes. This is recorded. You can rewatch it at any time you want, which I encourage you to do so. This is free information, free game that we're giving you. Um, but with that, my time is up today. You just listened to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money on WJC 98.3 LP, Chicago, 98.3 FM, Chicago. Um, so with that, my name is Jeff Badu. I'll be back next week. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you all do great. And I look forward to continuously and consistently delivering you all some content. Thank you.